that can you help us address the science yeah, so uh, in reference to the record time in um, achieving the vaccine yeah. and the view that this is still under test so when yeah. something is under testing and monitoring we don't force people to take it then yeah so you see um, there's the, the problem with that uh, argument is is that the reason why vaccines take a long time is because sometimes you need uh, uh, a certain amount of data, a certain amount of people taking the vaccine, and a certain amount of uh, uh, people getting, uh, uh, you know, infected by the, vac uh, the, 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 the disease, right? In COVID, all those things are compressed because of the scale of the pandemic. So if you look at the number of people who have taken the COVID vaccine, and you compare it to something like hepatitis, it's not even close. I think COVID, the WHO says what? How many million people have billions. taken? Billions have taken the vaccine. I mean, so so to Africa is, I think, seventy million. The last figure I yes, saw. Yes, but the world, the world you, is you're talking about billions, billions, something billions million. of people. Yeah, <laughs> billions of people have taken the vaccine. How many other vaccines have you had? Billions of people taking it. And so, if you say there's not enough data, it's it, this is this is really neither here nor there, not there. So you have data, the unprecedented amount of data on a vaccine. And then you talk about the fact that... But, but is that, isn't there an issue about skipping, um, you know, the, the protocol lineup? No, no. Again, you mean in the process in of... In the process of achieving... Again, um, the, if you look the at the process, approvals. if you look at the process of uh, approving vaccines, a lot of it is bureaucracy. And, and yeah. when there's a, a pandemic and everybody uh, needs, uh, uh, you know, uh, the vaccine, they cut the bureaucracy. They don't, the vaccine didn't join the queue with other vaccines that have been in the, pro, in the process. They moved it forward. And then the, the issue about the, the numbers as well. One of the things that delays vaccine development is for you to realize a certain minimum number of people who have been infected by uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the pathogen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying that here. There's more than necessary number of people who are exposed and who are infected. So basically you get the data you need. That would have taken you five then why, then why aren't the scientists fully telling us, because they, uh, people keep referring to this, the anti-vaxxers, they keep referring to the European <laughs> Lancet document that so, sought to say that yeah. vaccinated people... Have you, seen, have you seen that document? Yes, I, I, actually I saw it on Monday. <laughs> That's the first time I saw it. Yes, see, I see it on so in the, in the scientific community, right, you have, um, you know, 99% of the people agree on a certain fact. And then you have 1% of the scientists coming up with a different angle. Okay. But then people choose to focus on the 1% because it's contrary. <laughs> and so you, you see, in, in the scientific arena, just like in the legal profession, you have people's um, pedigree is important. Look yeah. at the pedigree of the people who are saying this is uh, 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 true or this is false. Check their record, check their background. Often you see that a lot of the people who are pushing this type of science, they have a history of being against vaccination. So people okay. need to be careful. Look at people's history. You would see that some of these people, they were even against uh, polio vaccine. They were against yellow fever vaccine. They were against every vaccine ever. So, so, don't, so, so don't they are fall, just against don't fall that in, aspect you of, you see, of science. You see, it's sort of like the uh, uh, um, LGBT is, issue that you, uh, um, some people believe. have certain beliefs. Well, I'll come to you, Dr. Anna, but don't worry. Some people have certain beliefs that they've carried their whole life. But then an issue comes up that gives them an opportunity to mainstream their issue. Mm. And this is what's happening with COVID. There are people who have been anti-vaxxers their whole lives. But now there's an opportunity to grow their, their army because there's a pandemic that everybody's worried about. So they take advantage of this situation and then they are pushing science that is dubious. Okay. And, and Dr. And so Dr. Anna, but you yes. wanted to uh, come in quickly. I'll let you and then... But I, please, I want to correct okay, something else. Okay, which, uh, one more thing. Which uh, the anti-vaxxers use a lot. That, oh, um, the, the, the places where people have been vaccinated, it is uh, those who have the vaccine are spreading the virus this number of there's times. You see, he gave an example which exposes this, the, 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 the flaw in the science that they, they are carrying. He talked about Israel. He said 18 people got infected, and out of those, 14 uh, had been vaccinated. If you went on the street and looked at road accidents, right, if 20 people 
died in road accidents. Check how many were vaccinated, probably 18 of them. Because in Israel, almost everybody is vaccinated. So if you just take that logic, that because out of 20 people who died from road accident, 18 were vaccinated and two were not, that means that our vaccination is causing road accident. That's not how it works. It's because the, that the general population, this, a high percentage of people are vaccinated. So if you take any group of people who have done anything, who have done armed robbery, or who have done, uh, uh, you know, whatever, the highest percentage of them would be vaccinated because in the general population, everybody is nearly everybody is vaccinated. Almost everyone has. So, so okay. to do proper science, you look at the percentage of those who are vaccinated who died, and then those who are unvaccinated, what percentage of them die? So you look at within the groups, what is the, the, the mortality rate? But you don't just look at the overall percentage. The, the denominator is very important. And so people take this data and then they use it to mislead people. And, and because a lot of people don't bother to look in the details, they just get a headline and they run with it. Mm, okay. please, please be critical. When you get this type of information, look at the source of the information. Look at the track record of the person. How many high quality science papers have they published in their life? And we scientists, we know each other's pedigree. Check their pedigree. Where, where are the other scientific discoveries that they've made? Where are they? All right? All of a sudden, they are genius scientists? No, COVID does not make genius scientists. Okay, those who are, who are genius scientists, they've been geniuses uh, their whole lives, and they, they have a track record. They've discovered many, many things. So I would rather trust somebody who has discovered 20 other things unrelated to COVID. I would trust their uh, information on COVID than somebody who has never discovered anything. Okay. But all of a sudden, they are claiming to be experts in COVID. All right. Uh